Okay, here we go with part eight of this chapter. And this slide kind of highlights what is the key for the SN2 mechanism. Again, SN1 has that carbocation that forms in that rate determining step. Uh, here's a transition state that is really the picture of SN2, showing that slow process that determines how quickly this kind of reaction happens. The bromide comes in simultaneously to the water leaving on the other side. And this is true for methyl alcohol as well as primary alcohols in general. And because we have to have the bromide coming in and matching up with the alcohol and uh, both of those have to be oriented correctly for this reaction to work, that's why it's called bimolecular. That's what the big two stands for. It's uh, the speed of this reaction is determined by the amount of alcohol you have available and the amount of, of halogen. And so it's bimolecular. And notice the bromine comes in on the opposite side that the water leaves. If the bromine tries to come in on the same side as where the, o is where the water is, uh, the reaction doesn't complete itself. So this requires an orientation that the SN1 reaction does not and so SN2 reactions are slower. So therefore, methyl alcohol and primary alcohols are always going to react slower compared to the kinds of alcohols that can form those carbocations. And it's really with SN2 reactions that we can really compare those halogens and see a clear difference. And the difference in rate of those four hydrogen halides is really to do with the difference in how good of a nucleophile iodide is versus bromide or chloride or fluoride. And as it says here, iodide is especially good, and so iodides react especially quickly. Fluoride is a lousy nucleophile. It doesn't tend to engage in this kind of reaction very easily, which is why the hydrogen fluoride, uh, one reason it, it's such a uh, poor performer in this case. With tertiary alcohols, once they make the carbocation, it really wouldn't matter what halogen is around. That third step in that SN1 reaction goes quick. So when we have that SN1 reaction going, we don't notice such a big difference in the ranking of the halogens. But with SN2 reactions, that really does matter. Well, um, there are other ways to put halogens in in molecules. In fact, other ways to react alcohols to cr cause that to happen. And this shows an alternative for making an alkyl chloride, especially when it doesn't go very fast using the hydrogen chloride. Remember, HCl isn't so good for primary alcohols or for methanol, but here's an alternative. SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride. And you can see that when it reacts with the alcohol, the net effect is to give us the chloride plus a, cu a couple of these inorganic side products. And uh, this is a, a very good alternative for when HCl simply does not work. And so this is a reactant you want to know. And again, we may not always be showing the complete balanced equation, but any alcohol reacting with SOCl2, uh, the net effect is just to replace the OH with the chloride. And so that's a recipe that you want to know. Bromides can be made without using HBr. And the number one alternative is to use phosphorus tribromide. Uh, HBr works pretty well, but we can oftentimes get a better percentage of our product or maybe make the reaction mo go more quickly if we use a special chemical like PBr3 and you can see the net effect is just to make the bromide and so again like it shows at the bottom we're not usually worried about keeping everything perfectly balanced we just want to know if I add PBR3 to an alcohol what does that alcohol become and so both the SOCl2 on the last slide and the PBR3 are common alternatives for putting halogens in place of OH groups and so those are also two reactions that you need to know about